good Monday morning. Two days before Christmas, we've got Christmas tree behind us here. And uh, we've got Dad with us. We've seen uh, Mom previous week, Victoria previous week. So uh, another motivational Monday. Hopefully you find it motivating. And uh, as I think all of you know, my dad is a minister. And um, I was looking at a sermon note that he has. And there's just a, a quote. I don't know if it's, a, it's just words, quote, maybe a quote. But it talks about to be at the right place isn't always enough. You have to be at the right place at the right time. And uh, in the context of what Dad is going to preach about, it's not necessarily what I'm going to gleam out of this. Maybe it is, it, it, to what a point it is. But to me, when I think about that, I think about preparation and um, making sure you're ready for when an event is going to happen uh, and everything that means. So preparation, definition of preparation, the action or process of making ready or being made ready for use or consideration. The or consideration is interesting there. Mm -hmm. We're not going to talk a lot about that, but um, when you think about job interviews or things like that, being eligible for consideration, something to think about. But my quote, Abraham Lincoln, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. I think it's a very good quote. So, um, you know, within the context of what you plan to preach about, but also just in general, when you think about that quote from Abraham Lincoln and how important preparation is, and in reality, if you think about an athletic contest, uh, let's just say football, they spend all week for the three hours. They spend many more hours preparing for the actual event. Your job interview, uh, when you're studying for tests, you spend way more time getting ready than the actual event is, at least if you're successful. Certainly there's elements where there are people that are gifted enough in an area where they may not have to do that. But generally speaking, we have to be prepared so that when the time comes and when you're in the right place, you're ready to receive consideration for whatever the thing is. So what do, what do you think about that? Well, your quote from Abraham Lincoln reminds me of something that I've heard John Maxwell say, and I don't know where he got it, that says a woodsman never loses a moment when he stops to sharpen his axe. Um, there, isn't there a quote about something about luck is when preparation meets opportunity? I mean, yep. just, there's so many times in life when the opportunity was there, but because you didn't prepare yourself three months before, six months before, two days before, because you thought, oh, I'm never going to need this or I'm never going to use this, you miss the opportunity. I'd much rather be over-prepared than under-prepared. Um, I, I have, as a, as a pastor, I have visited other churches where a minister is preaching and he's all excited about what he's preaching. He loses his thought and he can't remember where to go. And he goes up and he tries to look at his notes, but it's not in his notes. And everything stops. And you all, for me at least, I spend a whole lot more time preparing than I do presenting. And in work, to always be prepared because, well, it, it, you mentioned athletics. How many times you watch another football game or something and there's some play coming up and a defensive man makes a huge play and they say, if you will watch what he's doing here, you can tell he has studied the film. He was ready for this. It didn't fool him at all. And much better to spend that extra time and not have needed it, yep. than to have not spent it, and then to look losing the game. Yep, I need it. The uh, I like to give a personal example, and so you know from some of the others that have been past personal example. This is a, a recent, a current career, and my current team example. And we have to give every so often high level presentations to uh, to different folks that are you know reviewing what we've accomplished and uh, our contractual necessities. And I have a member on my team, Lisa, who some of you, you've seen her in the videos every now and again. Uh, she's a dynamic presenter. She's as good as I've ever worked with. And she is who leads a lot of these presentations for us because she can command a room. And we all know you've got people that lead presentations or you, you want to go to sleep. And you have people that you'll actually pay attention to. And she can get people to pay attention. She prepares but more than anyone I've ever seen. But I also, my the way I prepare our team is... We have to be done preparing for the presentation within 10 days of the presentation. There is no more preparation. Hmm. We must finish. 
and feel comfortable enough that if we don't talk about it again in 10 days, we're ready to go. We're that confident in our material. We've done whatever reviews we need to do with whoever. And then what I do in those next, you know, and in 10 days, you may only have five business that, you know, it depends on where that falls. Um, I ask them questions without the context of prep. So mm-hmm. I, I ask for information. Hey, do you remember how much we did of something in June? Because we have to report on how much of something we did in June. And I ask it in a different context to see if they're quickly recalling whoever has a given thing. And it's because I want to see if they just know the information so that they're not over preparing or panicking or, or cramming or all of that, which comes across very visibly in, uh, in the business setting. Yes. So that's a, that's a uh, skill I like to do. Another a weird example, but I think is relevant since we're on YouTube. I don't think dad will know who this is, but there's a, a very large YouTuber named Mr. Beast who... He's in his early 20s. I think he has 20 million plus uh, YouTube subscribers. And I watched a video with him recently where he talked about, they were asking him what what did he want to do next. And he said, I, I don't know because I've never thought about like beyond. I've always just prepared for the next step. And every dollar, he said until very recently, and this is a guy that some of his YouTube videos are, that's what I would love to do one day. He gets all his friends, he buys a Lamborghini, they all put their hand on the Lamborghini, and whoever leaves their hand on the longest keeps the Lamborghini. Make sure I'm in on that. Yeah, yeah. But like his very first sponsorship deal he got, whatever company said, we want to give you $5,000 to sponsor a video. And he said, if you make it $10,000, I'll do it, and the video will be, I will walk to a homeless person and give them the $10,000. And that's what he did. And he's known as a philanthropist now because of the millions and millions of dollars he gives away on YouTube. But he said, when I was making videos of me playing video games as a 13-year-old, if I made a dollar, I put that dollar and I put it in the savings because I wanted to get a better microphone. Hmm. And I knew it may take me two years to get a better microphone at a dollar, two dollars a month. And he said, I've never stopped doing that. I just take the money I'd make in a month. And I'd put it back into the preparations for the next thing I wanted to do. And he said, and only until recently have I stopped. Even when they would be, I'd get a $800,000 check from YouTube, we're giving it away in the next video. Mm. And he said, just kept growing and growing. He said, I've never actually stopped to say, where do I go from here? (laughs) And I just thought, like, that's an interesting look at a person that, you know, is in the modern world on YouTube that just kept preparing. Mm -hmm. For what was next. Because we never have to stop preparing. We never should stop preparing for what is next. Because we don't ever know when the next time that we, that preparation will pay off or what it will be. And so just to hear about him, well, I need a better microphone. Well, now I can get a much better microphone. Or now I'm going to get a new computer. And now I'm going to hire, there's a quote, hire my mom. So she doesn't have to work anymore. And she's going to post all my social media. Stuff. And, and he kept going. Instead of going, oh, I got all this money, let me go buy a... And I'm sure they have a nice house and everything else, but I just think that's a fascinating uh, and a testament of preparation because all of us can do that. All of us can, uh, you know, it's holiday shopping and things go on sale and you go, ah, I wish this would have been on a sale at a different time. Well, if you prepare and you say, all right, I want to buy an iPad and I'm going to put, you know, $5 a paycheck away, whenever there will come a time where an iPad goes on a sale and you have enough money for it. Mm-hmm. Five dollars at a time you would never miss. So it, those are simple examples that you know you think about, but uh, it's just important to keep our minds going in that direction. Um, even sometimes if we don't know what that direction is, uh, you know, I, as, as my family knows, you know, I changed careers and then I just started moving around the country, not really sure what was going to happen. But I knew if I went there, wherever there was, and I did my best, it would take me to the next place. And eventually, it was going to pay off in some way. And uh, eventually got back home and, and a lot of good things. So, anyway, any final thoughts for motivation on a Monday? Right before not, Christmas? Yeah, you're not wasting your time when you prepare yourself. When you're sharpening your mind, when you're sharpening your skills, when you're working on attitudes. And you're never wasting your time when you're preparing even if you don't know what you're preparing for, right. you may find a day just down the road where in the new year where you say, oh man, I'm glad I took the time to read that book, to read that article, to study this, to ask this person that. 
as a preparation for life and whatever it has for you in the new year. Yep. Yep. So there's a challenge. We'll talk to you next time.